You have launched the Thank You Chris Hipkins campaign. He hasn't done anything yet, has he? He has not done anything, but he can do something in the next couple of weeks and months. And that's why we are asking New Zealanders to preemptively thank him for being a hero, right? A hero. <laughs> why the next weeks or a couple of months? Why now? I think that's a great question. So um, we've already had a parliamentary select committee on pay transparency, which came out very strongly saying just do it. Mm -hmm. The government committed to all the recommendations of that select committee. Uh, the Minister for Women and a range of other other ministers have said that this is a priority, that they expect a bill in the House before the end of the term, and we need to do it now if it's going to happen. Well, we the know the they've term, done the work. We yeah. know they've done the work. <laughs> Chris has to push play. Oh, push play, Chris. Yes. Um, why are you targeting pay transparency rather than pay equity? Right, so the outcome is that um, that everybody should, uh, we think, be paid for the, for the contribution they make, the value mm. they make, the work they do. I don't think anybody in Aotearoa New Zealand with would disagree with that. Oh, so that's pay equity. No, but that, um, but pay transparency is do you know that you are being paid fairly or not? Mm. And at the moment, um, we uh, pay is very secret. Yep. Many people even have clauses in their contracts where you're not allowed to talk about it. Uh, most people don't know if they're being paid the same as the worker next to them or not. And all of this, um, and we know because we've got very large pay gaps that there is disparity in our workplaces. So pay transparency just basically blows that all open. We'll get to uh, so, so pay transparency pay is opening the door to pay equity, is that what you're saying? Well, it is one of the main ingredients that will get us there. Why has Australia got pay transparency legislation? I mean, how did they get it through and we don't have it? Their Prime Minister said there should be no gender pay gaps in our country, just do it. And um, well, Hasn't our Prime Minister said that? Haven't previous Prime Ministers said that? Yeah, but they haven't done it. That's right. the difference. The only difference Would is... Would you have expected New Zealand to be ahead on this issue, given our sometimes strong uh, supported women's suffrage and women's rights? We would have thought so, but um, it's, it's kind of embarrassing because when you look globally, we're one of the last nations. The whole EU has this law in for every business under 50. Um, you go through, it's Canada, it, obviously Australia, the UK. We're kind of way behind the eight ball. But do they have pay transparency or do they actually go as far as pay equity laws? Um, most of them, they have a range. So there's yeah. a whole range of different things. Most of them have pay reporting, so pay transparency. Okay. Some of them like France go to the nth degree if you've got a gender pay gap you find so yes they would go that far as well for every dollar a Pākehā man earns a Pākehā woman earns 89 cents the yes. Māori man earns 86 and Pacifica woman earns 75 cents yes. so it's not just based on gender as well is it no we strongly recommend uh, that we not only do gender pay gap uh, pay gaps, but we do the ethnic pay gap as well. So you introduced us to Thomas this morning. Mm. He will be, um, in his pay, um, again, the Pacific men, it's about 70%, 70 cents in the dollar. So he's already at a disadvantage. 70 cents on the dollar of a Pākehā man. Yeah, absolutely. So Sorry, 77%. 70, so he's okay. already on the back foot, even before he starts out on his day's work. OK, so if we're all behind this, why hasn't it got through? What is the major obstacle that's preventing pay transparency? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, well, I think that's a lovely question to ask the Prime Minister. I, well, but you should know as well, yes. because you have been the CEO of the Ministry yes. of Women, right? And we've had several uh, ministers for women, like Paula Bennett, Julian yes. Genta, Jan yes. Sanetti, and, and you've seen the inner workings yes, of this. Yes, I have. I think at the moment, I think there is uh, some nervousness, and you've seen that there's inflation. Um, what will this What will this happen? Mm. What will happen to wages? So we commissioned a report from Bill. The last thing we want to do was advocate for something that could even harm low-income yeah. families. And Bill's position is um, very clear that this is a distortion in the labour market. It's a distortion in the market. And over time, when that's fixed, it shouldn't create any inflationary pressure. Right. So this nervousness isn't founded. And imagine how much, I guess, extra money that will end up in people like Thomas's pocket that would make such a difference So if now. you're a minister tomorrow, what would you do? I would be standing up in Parliament introducing the bill uh, that makes pay gap reporting uh, for medium to large size businesses compulsory. Right. And you are optimistic that that's going to happen before the election? We are all thanking Chris. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Thanks Chris. Chris. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Uh, for him right. doing this. Okay. Joe Cribb, thank you from uh, Mind the Gap. Thank you so much for your Thanks. time. Thanks.